This is called Plants in Winter by Joanna Cole. This is about a little boy who likes to go to this botanical garden. And this is his friend, a scientist. And he thinks that all the plants are dead in the winter because they have no leaves. But his, his friend, the scientist, tells him that really, they, because they, they leave, lose their leaves because they, they need water to grow. And since the ground is frozen, they can't take too much water from it. And the leaves need water too. So by losing their leaves, they can save energy. There it is losing its leaves. The doc, like the scientist, showed the boy that the tree was still alive because it still had buds on it. The tree has buds in the winter because once the summer once it gets warmer, these buds will start opening up. So really, they're just protected in the winter. Um, the reason why pine trees don't lose their leaves or needles in the winter is because they don't need as much water, and actually, they store water for the tree. The leaves actually store water. The spruce and the holly are some trees who don't lose their leaves because they store water. The little boy also asked about like the dandelions and clovers and crocuses because he wonders what happens to them. And like um, a tulip bulb, that's what we plant to make the tulip grow. Well, a tulip will produce a new one, and that is the plant. And it'll stay underground the whole winter, protected. And when the spring comes, it'll start growing, and there's a new plant. And that's what happens with like the dandelion mandolin and the crocus and all those plants. Where's the next one? There are other plants who don't have bulbs underground and so They, um, like the morning glory is killed by the cold. The plant dies but leaves its seeds behind. And so those stay on the ground all winter. And then in the spring, they can grow. So the little boy thinks he knows all about plants in the winter. And then he finds a little plant growing in the middle of the snow. He's like, what is this? And so he runs to get his friend, the scientist. And she tells him that it's a snowdrop. And snowdrops are very beautiful. And they grow in the winter. Scientists don't know why yet. And they're still trying to figure that out. Those are the snowdrops. That's a little bit. And that's the end of that. And this next one's called Ocean Sunlight. How tiny plants feed the seas. And that's by Molly Bain. This is showing how the roots 
taking water to help the leaf factory, which takes in um, carbon dioxide and spits out oxygen. And the leaf factory makes sugar for huh? the tree, which is its food, basically. This is showing how we eat the fruit and seeds and make the sugar sort of like break apart. That gives us energy and we give out carbon dioxide which gives the leaf um, stuff to make sugar which makes the plants and these all breathe oxygen, right? Which the plant gives us. And these guys eat each other. So it's sort of showing how everything is connected. Um, life in the ocean. There's something called phytoplankton. And there's like a billion, 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 or like that much these tiny, tiny animals, and they reproduce as fast as they're eaten. That's really fast. Like, this is day one, day three, day five, day seven, day nine. Ooh. See, they can repro reproduce really fast. Um, the animals, like, deeper down, some use light which the other animals are attracted to, to catch their fish. Like, I think that one's a weird fish, because look, it sort of looks like he has a beard growing down in his chin. And then some eat each other. I think that one's weird. They're like cannibals. They're eating each other. And some animals just wait for snow. Now, snow in the sea isn't snow like we have snow. Or like the snow outside today. Snow is made up of dead things. Like their exoskeletons and their skeletons and tiny bits of like their meat and stuff. So these guys eat as much as they can when it snows. I think that's gross. They're eating each other again. <laughs> but then they get, like, once they eat it, they put it out on the floor, right? But how will the nutrients get back up to the phytoplankton up here? They need it and the sunlight to make food, which the fish will eat and eventually go down the line. Wind will make it go back up, up, up to the phytoplankton, which get eaten by these fish, which get eaten by every other creature in the sea. Um, and that's just a picture. Willow goes crazy for catnip. And this is by Millicent E. Selson. Oh, if I had some catnip right now, I'd show you how crazy Willow goes for it. Catnip is one of the herbs. It, like, it belongs to the herb family. And it, People back in the olden days thought it was it was said to relieve cold pains in the head, pains in the stomach, and bruises from falls. I didn't know that before I read this. Um, this is a catnip seed. It's very very tiny, like that's on it on the finger. Very tiny. Um, 
and if you don't keep it in cages, cats will actually tear it down. <laughs> they go so crazy, but um, the leaves are shaped like spades, and they grow opposite each other. The catnip flowers are grouped in clusters, and they're small, and that's what it looks like, like, when it's large. And each one, if it is pollinated, makes a little seed capsule with four seeds inside. Look, it's smaller than a penny. There it is. And there's the penny. It's very small. Um, Alright. The reason why cats go crazy for it is Nepalacatone. Nepalacatone makes cats go crazy, but Nepalacatone keeps bugs away. So that's why it has that smell in it. Um, ants are sort of cannibals. They eat other insects, right? So this scientist, um, I forget his name, he put two cockroaches right next to each other as an experiment. He put Nepalacatone on one and none on the other. The bugs or the ants, went right to the one without Nepalacatone on it, but they didn't touch the one without with Nepalacatone on it. So I think that's pretty cool that Nepalacatone keeps bugs away. Look, there's a cat going crazy for catnip. <laughs> and that's all I've got in that book. Oh, here's a good one. A Seed is Sleepy by Diana Hutt Aston. And then it shows me a bunch of different seeds. It says uh, this is a Japanese Japanese maple seed. Everyone knows this one is Sunflower. Um, a Texas Mountain Laurel pod with the seeds in it. As most seeds sleep through a season or two, waiting for the warmer temperatures of spring. So those are the Texas Mountain Laurels. And these are their seeds. Um, it says 90% of the plants on earth are flowering plants. I think that's pretty cool. Those are a bunch of plants. This one's called the Devil's Claw. I think its seed case is pretty cool. Let's see here. Seeds come in many sizes. This is an orchid seed, and each one of those tiny little white specks are a seed. And the cocoa de mer plant. Coconut is a huge seed. I mean, like it could weigh a pound. It can, the cocoa de mer palm can weigh up to 60 pounds too. Whew. I mean, like, can you imagine a 60 pound seed? It's huge. I like this little seed right here. A hamburger bean. I mean, doesn't it look like a hamburger? And this one's called an ear pod. I think that one's pretty cool too. And a sea heart. And um, this one's a weird one, a sea coconut. 
A lot of these are seeds that float up on water to different places. I think those are cool. Um, this one shows, it says a seed is generous. And it shows a few of the plant's life cycles. Like this is a bean, and rice, pumpkin, slash pine, and a teak tree. So I think that's sort of cool. And then this shows the parts of a seed. This is the seed coat, this brown part right here. Um, these are the shoots or the pummel. This is the root or the radical. And this is the seed, like the seed leaf or Cody ribbon. Cody ribbon. It's really the plant's food. Let me see that word. What's that word? Oh, yeah. Hold on, I can't see. Oh, maybe you're right. Cotyledon. Okay, never mind. Sorry. It's a little, little weird word. Yeah, I thought you had said it wrong. Seeds are ancient. Ancient. Um, the oldest known seed to sprout. Hey, Adi. I hate to interrupt, but I only have 10 minutes left of tape. Can you go a little faster? Came or from an extinct date palm tree. After it was an earth from a long ago King's Mountain Top Palace in Israel. A scientist planted it. Four weeks later, it sprouted. And it was like a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand years old or something like that. Mm. This shows that a seed forces against gravity because gravity pulls down and the seed grows up. I think that's cool. with peanuts and popcorn. This one's a cool book. Scientists discovered some very old popcorn kernels in a place called Bat Cave. They took them and they tried to pop them and guess what? They popped after 2,000 years in that old cave. I think that's pretty cool. They were um, like some old Indian kernels, and they actually like grew and popped. Um, there's a bunch of different kinds of popcorn. There's actually the popcorn plant. There's um, corn called sweet corn. And there's col corn called dent corn. Um, sweet corn and dent corn are the ones we eat and the ones that we also feed animals. And popcorn is the one that we usually pop popcorn out of. <laughs> um, popcorn pilgrim style. Um, did you know that popcorn was part of the first Thanksgiving feast? I think that's pretty cool. Guess what? The Indians ate their popcorn plain, but pilgrims put cream and sugar on it. They liked it for breakfast. I think that's a pretty funny way to eat popcorn. I mean, cream and sugar. Usually I put salt and butter on mine. Um, this book also get, gives us a lot of different recipes, and it also tells us a bunch of different experiments. And there's also some party games that I think are cool. And that's the end of that book. This one's called an eyewitness book. It's called Plant. And I don't know where the author is there. Alright, so where is the first one here? I know I marked it somewhere right there. Oh. 
these things like to hide on me? It's right there. Oh. No, you got a marker right here. You should have stuck them out farther. Yeah. I think they slid down. Yeah, I guess so. There you go. There. Born on the wind. This um, sort of shows how a dandelion goes through its stages. So a dandelion is out like this when it wants to be pollinated, and it closes up when it's making its seeds. Then when it comes out, it sort of looks like that, but then it looks like that. And finally, the wind blows its seeds away, and these little puffs are sort of like umbrellas for the seeds and they carry them lot far, far away. I have it somewhere here. Oh, there it is. Creepers and climbers. Some plants like to grow against poles. So they're actually, like, they, it, they actually do it for support against the wind. So like if a big wind blows, this coil here, it acts sort of like a spring, and lets the plant move, but it'll make it not be harmed. Like maybe a small tear in a leaf or two, but it won't be blown away. <laughs> there is a pitcher plant. It's a meat eater. Like those other plants I showed you. Oh, meat eaters. So, this is a hanging pitcher plant and a cobra pitcher plant. And this one's called a butterwort and a cape sundew. So, those are those. And let's see. Oh, there's a Venus flytrap. So like after like a tenth of a second, this is what happens. Then that, then that, and it's trapped. It starts sending out digestive juices. It dissolves the damselfly. Poor damselfly. <laughs> Thought it was just landing on a normal plant. Oh, there's that big, humongous, giant flower I showed you earlier. It's bigger than my dad. It's like seven feet, eight feet. My dad's only six. I think I have one more back here. Oh, I think not. So that's the end of that book. But there's a bunch of stuff you can learn from that one. And my very last one. The Magic School Bus, Plants, Seeds, a book about how living things grow. I learned that pollen comes in many shapes and sizes. It can flow on the wind or it can be carried by a bumblebee. Most likely it's carried by a bumblebee or other insects. Like a fly sometimes comes to a flower. I learned that in the stigma, there are pollen tubes where the pollen goes down and fertilizes the seeds. See, here's Arnold going down the pollen tube. And there's a seed growing. And that's it. Bye. I wish Willow was here to say goodbye too.